Hey, this is Joe. And this is Evan. And this is the Non-Sensory Podcast. On this week's episode, we hope for a new Rogue Squadron from EA. Control is coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X. Bungie is rumored to be making a kid-friendly game. Life is delayed part 13. More movie delays. We ask what would be the best video game character to be a friend in real life. And finally, we share our top five worst games of the PS5 reveal. So let's stick around and let's get to it. Greetings and welcome to episode 11 of the Non-Sensory Podcast. You can hear our soothing voices every week by finding us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher. But if you'd rather get a look at our beautiful faces, you can also find us on YouTube. Or come check out our regular Tuesday stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash nonsensory. On social media, we tweet at nonsensory1, and you can find us on Facebook at Nonsensory Podcast. You can also support us on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash nonsensorypod. We have four tiers of membership ranging from $1 to $20 and perks ranging from getting to vote in polls to getting to read a personal greeting at the start of our show. Joe? Evan? Let's get it started, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah, I'm fully Um, rested, as you can probably guess from my many, many hours of sleep. (laughs) First first asleep last awake. (laughs) Yep, it was great. It was so good. Um, So, uh, I lost my job Tuesday at lunchtime. And I already start the next job Monday. I actually probably could have started uh, Thursday. Yeah. But I was just like, I'm going to take this time. Yeah. Give yourself a little, a couple of days, a little couple of mental health days at least. Yeah. Some time to get ready. And actually, I don't know, starting a new job, I need to like mentally prepare, I think a little bit. So. Oh yeah. I like, I'm still freaking out because it's, um, even though I'm still going to be uh, a mechanic, I'm doing the same thing. Mm hmm. Uh, it's a way different environment and you know, it's all new people and you never know what to expect and yeah, you got to get used to finding where all the, the tools are and now you get to be the new guy again. Uh, so yeah, um, I've been playing a lot of games actually. Okay. In the, the, I saw you f- playing Fire Emblem. Yeah. I played a little bit of Fire Emblem this morning. I have, uh, three houses. Mm-hmm. It's it's fun. I li- I like it for the tactics. Uh-huh. I don't care about the story or like any of the other stuff really, but just being able to do I'm a tactics game person, yeah. you know. I know. I mean, uh, uh tactics tactics advance is one of your like favorite games ever. Ev- yeah, ever. And <clears throat> um I then I had Mario plus Kingdoms uh like Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, mm-hmm. which was developed in the snowdrop engine which i didn't know <clears throat> um but that game's also tactics i've been playing a lot of that it's really fun uh they had it for 15 bucks and it's still 60 normally because oh wow because nintendo doesn't do sales right yeah they, they don't so when you see one or they don't do price drops right they yeah. do sales so when you see something like that you you grab it yeah so um but I have heard you've had a hard time. Yeah, I haven't really, out time. I haven't really had time to play stuff. Uh, uh, it, people probably don't know this, but like I also am a a landlord of sorts, and so I have been having you know contractor calls and doing you know manual labor back there and stuff, and in, in, in my spare time and upkeep, all kinds of other stuff. We had family come in, so I was basically just doing nothing but chilling with them whenever I had free time. So. Hopefully, coming up, I can actually have some time to play some stuff. I'm definitely going to carve out some time for me to play The Last of Us 2 when it comes out. Yeah. Which is next Friday. So, and we'll be coming back from a little vacay then. And so, I should have that day and Saturday at least to just like sit and just play the game. And I know Eileen will be like, yeah, you can do whatever you want because she'll she'll just want to watch me play it. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, for sure. I mean, I'm still not sure if I'm going to get it like close to lunch. I think I'm, I think I'm, unless we come into like some cash unexpectedly. Yeah. I think I'm going to wait till the price drops a little bit. That's I'm, I'm really excited for the game. Like, don't get me wrong, but like, I rarely buy new games. Uh, I think the last game that I bought new was doom eternal. And I don't think I've bought like a new game since then. So it's 
whenever I do buy one, I don't feel that bad about it. Animal Crossing was the last new one, which was at the same time as Doom Eternal. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> with, it, with Isabel and the Doom guy. <laughs> yeah. That is so awesome. Uh, I'm, like, I'm going to make that my avatar on somewhere. <laughs> you should. We should get We should get a piece of art for that. Replace this. We can Doom. have that commissioned. Yeah. yeah, we should do it. Oh, I don't think we need to have it even commissioned. I think there's probably, like, we could probably just go order it like, right now if we wanted to. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> okay. I'm down. We'll put it right where the Doom guy is already. <clears throat> Today's episode is brought to you by Tales from the Arcanist and TheArcanist.io. The Arcanist serves up bite-sized science fiction, fantasy, and horror from independent authors all over the globe. Everything is about a five-minute read or less, so these little bite-sized tales are easy to binge when you have a moment on your lunch break or perhaps when you're planted firmly on the toilet. The Arcanist also has essays about modern culture, the art of writing, the history of fiction, and much more. Their weekly fiction podcast, Tales from the Arcanist, is a similarly bite-sized listen that collects two stories, one brand new and one from their archive, and delivers the spooky and strange fresh to your ears. To check out thearcanist.io or to submit a work of your own, visit the link in the description. You can find their podcast, Tales from the Arcanist, there as well, or find it on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts. All right, so with that, let's get into, let's get into the news today. All right. Oh, since I did the intro, you can go ahead and do the first piece of news, Joseph. All right. This is uh so Star Wars Squadron confirmed official reveal coming next week. Um so this is by Andrew Andy Chalk at PC Gamer. And uh I've read some of his stuff before. I kind of like him. He seems like a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that's relevant. Okay. <laughs> Electronics art. I'm starting off like right off the gate. All right. <laughs> I'm going to take a sip of coffee. All right. Let's get into it. Electronic Arts has confirmed that Star Wars Squadrons, an upcoming game that leaked earlier today, will be officially unveiled on June 15th. So Star- tomorrow. Oh, man. Heck yeah. You do this to me all the time. So actually yesterday, because this is Tuesday, remember, when people watch. <laughs> oh crap yeah you're right okay <laughs> so this was yesterday <laughs> uh, star wars squadrons first came to notice came to notice unintentionally that's a oddly written sentence when as reported by GameSpot, a pilot wanted image along with a non-functional pre-order link appeared briefly on the front page of xbox.com it was quickly taken down, but not before being widely noticed and shared. Okay, so it makes sense altogether, but like, it makes you, it sound like you're missing a word. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. EA hasn't shared any details about the game yet, but it seems sure to be. It seems sure to be some kind of space combat game. The image features a rebel and imperial pilot flexing up for a face-off, while starfighters from both sides charging headlong at each other in the foreground. Um. The YouTube title also point, uh, pointedly states pilots wanted and you don't hire pilots to shoot at each other from trenches. My fingers are crossed for a TIE fighter style single player game, but the art suggests that a multiplayer focus is more likely. Okay, so uh, <laughs> it's possible that this is the final title for Project Maverick, an unannounced Star Wars game that in an amusing twist was leaked in March by the PSN release's Twitter uh, Twitter bot. The artwork that slipped out then was less on the nose, but it did feature a squadron of X-Wings being pursued by a Star Destroyer through an asteroid field. Again, suggesting that some kind of yank and, yank and bank shenanigans are in store. Yeah, I've never heard that before. It sounds dirty. Look at the size of that thing. A Star Destroyer can also be seen in the full squadrons at the EA shared... It, art that EA shared on Twitter. My, like, why you let me read on this show is beyond me. Uh, I'll I'll take that down. I'm gonna note that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a Yankin Bank also just sounds like a spank bank. <laughs> like, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. I'm like, what? Why is this in here? <laughs> oh, look at that. I'm gonna save it in my Yank Bank. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
like you were saying, this sounds like another uh, Rogue Squadron. Maybe. Yeah. So I think like we were we talked about on a previous episode about this uh, Project Maverick leak um, a couple months ago. Um, I think maybe. A, yeah. Back in March is according to the article. Okay. So we talked about that a little bit. And I basically said, like, yeah, I'd be totally down for another Rogue Squadron. And I think more recently, I think we talked about, like, there needs to be another Rogue Squadron because uh, when Battlefront 2 was free on PSN, it was like all I wanted was another yeah Rogue Squadron game. Yep. So this is, like, perfect for me. This is exactly what I want. Um, it's It would suck if it's all multiplayer focused. I would love for there to be, like, a short campaign and then, a lo- and, and like, a full multiplayer suite. But I'll take what I can get. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I would love to. I would love to play, uh, like, the Rogue Squadron, you know, Rogue Squadron Two from mm-hmm. from GameCube. Uh, I remember playing that back in the day. Oh yeah, those games are so good. Yeah, but it's insanely hard. Mm-hmm. It was insanely hard. I I think I only ever. I only ever made it past. Well, no, I think. So the first level you're on the in the desert, right? Yeah. And then the very next level you're actually on the the Death Star, I think, doing the trench. Oh, uh, the, the light in the on the oh, Death Star, whatever it's called, the the the, the suicide run or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, first you have to cl- like blow up so many of the turrets so that you can clear the way, so that you can dive into the trench, and then you actually get to fire the missile. Yeah. And blow it up and, um, ah, sorry. Um, I mean, I, rem- I that was that game was really fun, but it was really hard, and I'd love to be able to play a campaign like that again, like not the same thing, but in that vein, um, and have the multiplayer, yeah, and maybe don't make it so friggin' hard, or give me some give give me some <laughs> difficulty choices. Yeah, it's just you know, there's a, I think back in the day, whenever Star Wars was a. Uh, a property in like the 90s they tried a whole bunch of different stuff in in terms of like the t- the types of games that they made and stuff and lately it I mean, feels like, like all like everything it feels like now all we get is like you're either a jedi or it, you know it's like battlefront so it's cool that it's expanding mm-hmm. again to be more than just that maybe we'll get another kotor sometime in the future which would be great well it's all <clears throat> yeah it's basically all like on foot warfare cuz yeah there's battlefront and then there's uh there were all the you could be a sith or Jedi, because there there were the um, no, Force Awakens. Oh, the Force Awakens, yeah. Or isn't that what they were called? Yeah, yeah. Or the Force no, the, un- Force Unleashed. Thank you. Yeah, because I was like, Awakened is the is the movie. Like, yeah. yeah. Um. So. But that's all we've gotten for a long time. Yeah. So I, I agree. I agree with you. <laughs> this this uh, could be a, uh, a nice refresher, uh, and. Like another pod racer would be cool because like that was awesome. On yeah, sixty four. I think the pod racing thing was so tied to being like tied to the first movie and stuff like that in like the yeah. early two thousands and stuff. It'd be, yeah. They are bringing a remaster of that game back though, of Episode One Racer. I mean, maybe that would be enough to get people like this yeah. Is if what we want, if it sells enough, why not? You know, because it's basically another. What did you call it last last episode? Cart destruction or. Oh, like car combat. Car combat. Yeah, it's basically car combat. Yeah. But yeah, like more yeah. on a track instead of derby style. Yeah, I think the more genres you can work Star Wars into, the better. Just because it makes it more creative. Yeah. It takes it out of this like little box that of what we know Star Wars can be in game form, which is cool. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I'm, I'm excited. So Maybe. The, the next piece of news we've got is uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is probably coming to early access in August. This is from Charlie Hall at Polygon. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 could arrive in early access as soon as this August. The announcement was made Saturday during the Guerrilla Collective Online Game Festival. Developed by Larian Studios of Divinity Original Sin fame and inspired by the fifth edition of Dungeons and Dragons, Baldur's Gate 3 was first announced in E3 2018. A prequel of sorts launched last year, a tabletop module called Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. COVID-19 has impacted the Larian team as it has many people around the world, the studio said Saturday in a news release. But the shift to work from home has gratefully has gratefully been a successful one, allowing Larian to continue building toward an early access period of maybe August. Larian will have more information about the specific content of early access in the future, but the team is committed to working directly and 
directly with community feedback and involve the game during this early access campaign. Um, so I believe this game was announced as a Stadia exclusive, or it was an, uh, it was announced alongside Stadia. Um, and I don't think that it is exclusive anymore. Um, so uh, I remember hearing whispers about this game a way back. But it was so long ago that I actually forgot until you brought this article up. Yeah, so uh, d- the Divinity games have been like super well received, and uh, uh, Larian seems to be like the one the studio that like like wants to pick up the mantle of these old CRPGs like Baldur's Gate and like Icewind Dale and all that stuff. Um, not that there haven't been other developers that have made like old '90s style RPGs and stuff like that that are very like very narrative driven, but. Um, if you wanted to make another Baldur's Gate game, I think that Larian's like the best studio that you could possibly get to do it. So, I mean, I don't have much. Ex- how how much experience do you have with the Baldur's Gate games? Uh, I played them when I was a kid on like my first PC that I had. It was like you know a ninety Windows ninety five machine or whatever. Um, I played them back then along with like you know the old Diablos and stuff like that. But um, it's been a while. Um, but I know they're held up in like very high regard. Yeah. Um, amongst people that like really like CRPGs, like Icewind Dale and um, wow, Tor- uh, t- uh, d- Torment, Planescape Torment, which is like always pointed out as like the best classic RPG of all time. Um, but they're hard to get into. They're very story heavy. They're yeah. isometric. A lot of lot of text. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I know there that that's a turnoff for some people, but for me, that's you know. I, I I like I like a good story. It can come even off as I, slow though. Even if I have to read it. Well, I mean that's where that's where the challenge in the writing comes in where you have to make the writing engaging enough. You know, if it's not interesting then, you know. Yeah. No, and well, the writing is fantastic in those games, so I yeah. I think that that's kind of what people are looking for more than fast action gameplay and stuff. It's more more slow paced, more methodical, your decisions matter more, all that kind of stuff. So I think that's why I'm into tactics a lot. I like to watch everything move. Yeah, there's the fun of like just going in with a, a sword in uh mm, in like Dark Souls or uh Fallen Order or mm-hmm. you know, you go in the sword and you just start hacking things up. And, you know there's there's fun in that or God of War. Yeah. But sometimes I like to step back and look at everything in the the tedious and like I'll move him over here and see what happens and you know because I'm I'm I also like like chess yeah you know, I love, so um I mean I'll be willing to give it a shot depending on what we see you know coming up so I'm I'm pretty sure the D- the newer Divinity games were multiplayer um so I think that it would be cool to play one of these games like as as a group yeah I mean. We, we we talk about that all the time and like we all it's hard getting people together on the same schedule yeah like this is the extent of us being on the same schedule yeah. <laughs> so and tuesdays and but tu- it's hard you know one day a week it's like we're working through reach it takes you know yeah we've only got like an hour and a half every once like once a week it's gonna be a while before we can like get into a bunch of different games yeah especially something that's like narrative heavy yeah it'll be like okay so we read that now it's now I'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so that I, I like that idea. Well, maybe we'll give it a spin, but yeah. Anyway, on to the next one. Yes, sir. Uh, Wonder Woman 1984 and Tenet release dates shuffled again. This is an article by Jim. Jim Vavoda. I think the Vavoda. J would be signed. Okay. Like. Yeah. I I was looking at it. I'm like, Veg Voda. Veg Voda. <laughs> um, at IGN. Um, <clears throat> Warner Brothers announced Friday that it has postponed the release of Christopher Nolan's thriller Tenet from July 17th to July 31st. The studio will re-release Nolan's Inception on July 17th instead to honor the film's 10th anniversary with an extended sneak peek at Tenet attached to it. Uh, so by the time this ga- this <clears throat> by the team by the time this movie comes out, you'll probably have already seen the whole thing in trailers. 
Probably. <clears throat> We're especially thrilled in this complex and rapidly changing environment to be bringing Christopher Nolan's Tenet, a global tentpole of jaw-dropping size, scope, and scale to theaters around the world on July 31st, said Toby Emmerich, chairman of Warner Brothers Pictures uh, Group, in a statement. It's been longer than any of us could have imagined since we've seen a movie on the big screen, and to acknowledge Chris's fans as we count down to Tenet's opening day, we are also excited to offer his masterpiece Inception in theaters for its 10th anniversary on July 17th. I actually think <clears throat> act um, having released it, uh, released Tenet on July 17th would have been the perfect way to celebrate the 10th anniversary of another one of his movies. Especially when they're in like the same mental space. Well, yeah, I don't. Like, I don't think that they're necessarily. You know, like they definitely wouldn't have done this were it not for the fact that they had to push Tenet back. Like, I don't yeah. think that they would be, be celebrating the tenth anniversary of Inception in theaters if it wasn't because yeah. like you know, we have to put something <laughs> here now. So. Well, actually, I think I think they probably would have. Because they're looking for things that'll bring people, you know, remember we were talking about this, yeah, what's going to bring people back in. It always seemed like it was going to be in the lead up to these other things, though, you know, to kind of like gauge people's interest or whatever. But I don't know. The fact that they're going to show another movie in theaters in its place seems to me to suggest that it's not about necessarily like them being worried about people getting into theaters. Um, yeah, because they're still like they're going to put something else in theaters in place of it. So it's not like a theater hang up. I think it's more of a. That, yeah, that's what I mean. We were talking about like what. The, I guess they were talking about uh, possibly having older movies to test the waters. Yeah. <clears throat> on how to bring people in. And like, I feel like they this probably, is one of the perfect ones. I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm still waiting to hear that like Matrix back in theaters announcement. Oh, that'd be awesome, too. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, so, movie moviegoers will also be treated to an exclusive sneak peek of select films on Warner Brothers' upcoming slate. Uh, Wonder Woman 1984 has had its release date pushed yet again. In light of Warner Brothers' announcement Friday that Christopher Nolan's Tenet is now opening July 31st, the studio has shifted the DC superhero sequel from August 14th to October 2nd, 2020. This is the fourth release date for Wonder Woman 1984. The sequel is originally slated to open November 1st, 2019. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? <clears throat> uh, before getting postponed to June 5th and then to August 14th, 2020. So we're not going to get to see Wonder Woman until October. I'm really looking forward to that movie, too. I thought the first one was okay. I think the new one looks great. I, yeah. I think the first one, you're right. I think it was, the first one was good. I don't know if it was like the greatest thing of all time. Yeah. But I, the new one looks like more visually interesting, I think. I think Wonder, the first Wonder Woman was way better than Captain Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I think way so too. better. I fell asleep in the middle of Captain Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That movie was, really, Carol, Carol Danvers just doesn't have, like Brie Larson does not have the same charisma as Gal Gadot. I think that she's. I think she might have a bigger range of things that she could play. Yeah. But the way that she chose to play uh, Captain Marvel was just boring. Very. We were talking about this with uh, with devs a little bit where like she's playing that like emotionally distant like just she she doesn't have like in, in in Captain Marvel. She doesn't have like that much of a, an emotional range. She no. and also she's very. I don't know. In most of the stuff that I've seen, like, it's weird to like see interviews with her and then to like watch her characters in her movies because her characters in her movies always seem very much like her, where she's just like, oh well, kind of you know this, and then you're just like, all right, like I don't need a quip. I don't need some sort of like. Uh, like well, actually, kind of quip the co to come back from from you for for literally everything. It was like no matter who was talking to her, she would just be like, "Well, you might think that, but you know." And I was just like, "Oh, so there's like exactly like zero. There's like there's like, all right. What we want you to do in this movie is to treat everyone with zero respect the whole time. Nobody, everybody that talks to you is dumber than you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got from her in that movie the entire time. Well, I definitely thought. I definitely thought Wonder Woman was was good. Um, 
Yeah. Gal- and, yeah. Sorry. Go on. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do, where they go from there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't think Gal Gadot is like the best actress in the world, but she is entertaining to watch. Yeah. And know? I think, I think, and it seems like she's having fun with it. Yeah. You know, that's the thing that I didn't get from Brie Larson and Captain, Captain Marvel. Right, it didn't right, seem like right. she was having fun with the character. Yeah. I'd agree with that. And like, I think Wonder Woman's probably the only property of DC, like other than the Batmans that I'm even remotely interested in. So, well, and before granted to give credit to the first Wonder Woman, I wasn't interested in Wonder Woman at all until it, I yeah. saw that movie. I, so I it agree did with its, that. it did yeah. its job yeah. in getting no. me invested in an, another movie. So. I'm with you in that camp. Yeah. I was like the whole time it was coming up. I was like, meh, meh. And then I watched it with Hazel and it was like, this is pretty good, you know. I can watch another of these. They could have definitely done a better job with like the the bad guy. The bad guy was kind of like meh, you know. There, I liked her whole story and her story with um Chris Pine's character and everything. That was cool, but like the the character that she ended up like the the villain at the end of the movie ended up being like very lackluster. So we'll see what they where they go from there. <clears throat> Our next bit of news is Control has been confirmed for PS5. Confirmed. <laughs> Confir- well, I mean, it's been confirmed, and it's, they've also conformed it into a different title for it's the, part of the job. Um, this is coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X. Uh, this is from Sharif Said at VG247. Um, while everyone was still reeling from the deluge of reveals at the PS5 showcase, Remedy Entertainment quietly announced that Control is coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X. The news comes from a single tweet by the developer, which sadly doesn't contain any more information. Details, it says, details, it says, are coming at a later date. It's not clear if owners of Control's current version will get the next-gen game within the same console family. Hence, if you bought it for PS4, you get it for uh, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, etc. Um, the news, however, is unsurprising. For one, Control is the type of game that would benefit from the leap in power on both PS5 and Xbox Series X. Control is also one of the pioneering ray tracing games on PC, and thanks to PS5, Xbox Series X hardware-based ray tracing, could end up being quite the showpiece of their capabilities. Um... I still haven't played Control yet. Yeah, me either. But I, it looks great. It looks like, exa- like a third-person shooter that's pretty, that also has like a bit of exploration, some cool physics. It's right up my alley. So I definitely oh, need to check that out. Probably I've, after I play Doom. Like after I finish Doom, I might pick up Control next. I, I've been looking at Control for quite a while, like in the lead-up to the launch, and then when it came out, and then I've been watching it since, and... I really want to play this game. I don't know why I haven't yet. Um, so yeah, uh, it coming to PS5. I mean, that just I kind of put that puts me in the camp where I'm like, maybe I'll just wait. Yeah, I can just hold on. PS5 will come out, and I'll be able to play it, and it'll be beautiful. Yeah, yeah, for I'm, sure. Uh, I'm ready. I'll be interested also because, like, what they're saying in in this article, you know, it's it was a ray tracing kind of showcase on PC, so it'll be interesting to see, you know. That's that's kind of the cool thing that you'll get to see is like when people do the comparisons between like here's how ray tracing works on the PC version, here's how it works on Xbox Series X and PS5. Like how do the <laughs> how do the capabilities kind of translate and all that stuff? We'll actually get to see like how robust the ray tracing element on the next consoles will be. Have you okay? So it's not uh, comparing like the ray tracing, but have you seen uh, they put the Dark Souls or the Demon Souls oh, trailer yeah. up next yeah. to the old one. Oh man, night and day. It's great. Well, oh, everything's just so packed with detail in that game. Like there's just <clears> the environments <throat> are just stuffed with new stuff. Is it okay? Is it just me, or did it seem like because of how the way it makes the colors pop mm-hmm. actually almost make it look cartoony? Like yeah, a little bit. When I saw the trailer um, at the PS5 reveal, um, I was unsure that it was a that it was Demon Souls. Yeah, because specifically like... because the color palette was like less dark and brown compared right. to like the older Demon Souls uh, and the like the first Dark Souls and stuff like that. Like they were they're, they're very more, brown. They're very muted and brown, but they're also like it's for that mood. So to me, it just seemed like a new game. Like if. R- you remember the the uh, the Elder Scrolls uh, Six reveal that was just uh, those mountains and clouds and stuff, and they just kind of like went over the the landscape yeah. and stuff like that. For me, it looked the same. 
when it, because the start of the Demon Souls trailer was that it was like they went over an environment and it was just like kind of foggy, cloudy, and then there was mountains and stuff, and it looked almost identical. Yeah, with the way, <clears throat> with the art style that was there, or the way it appeared because of how it brings the colors out, mm. it looked. It could have been. It could have popped up. You know, uh, Elder Scroll Six, and I'd have. Yeah, I'd have believed it. Yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> But I, I am looking forward to seeing how Control could look mm-hmm. on PS5. Um, did they say? Did that article say anything about Xbox? It's coming to Xbox. As yeah, well? both. Yeah. Okay. All right. XSX. Xbox Series X. That's it, the the names of the systems for Xbox are just it's ridiculous. Yeah, I was listening to uh, the kind of funny games uh, podcast the other day, and. You know, like Greg Miller and all these guys have been in the industry forever. Yeah. And they're still tripping up, tripping up like, you know, like uh, you'll hear them talking about Xbox Series X and they'll be like Xbox One and and stuff like that. Yep. And it's just they're they're like having to change, like remember like multiple times in, well, a, in a conversation. It's just so confusing. Xbox, then you had the 360 and then you go from 360 to one. And now you're going to Series X. It's like there's no connect. I mean, yes, PS1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's boring. And mm-hmm. I'll give you that. Like, but there's just no separation. Well, there's know? no, like, there's very little confusion that you can have between 4 and 5 versus like if you have, you've got Xbox One, then you've got Xbox One X, then you've got Xbox Series X. Like the fact that they decided to name their console Series X after they called the last generation one X. iteration console of the previous console to also have an X in the name is just just dumb. Yeah. I don't get it. But I mean we're we're a little bit off the rails, but you'll notice that Nintendo has not only had original names for every system, they're also easy to s- differentiate. To be fair, people had a big issue with them calling the Wii U the Wii U. Now, I agree with you there, but we're pretending that doesn't exist. <laughs> well, it do- no, it doesn't, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Who's pretending? What are you talking about? It doesn't what, exist. What, what is, what's a Wii U? What the heck is that? All right. AT&T looking to sell WB Interactive, including studios NetherRealm, Rocksteady, and Avalanche. I did not realize that Rocksteady was also WB. Like, why did that not? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll read the article and then I'll, you know, commentary. <clears throat> AT&T is reportedly looking to sell Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment Gaming Division, which includes studios like NetherRealm, Avalanche, and Rocksteady. The deal could be valued at $4 billion, and there's reported interest from companies like Take-Two, EA, Activision, Blizzard. Um, oh, I have a lot to say already. <laughs> In a report from CNBC, telecom company AT&T, which purchased Warner Media in 2018. See, this, I hate this when an article is written and then they repeat themselves like eight times <laughs> in the course of telling the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, is looking to divi- divest some assets to help pay off $200 billion in debt. This includes WB Interactive which has already picked up interest with uh, from some of the game industry's largest companies, though sources say a deal is neither in place nor imminent. Um, any com- company that does purchase WB Interactive will go uh, will not gain the rights to IP like Batman or Harry Potter, which is owned by Warner Brothers instead. Any deal will likely include a commercial licensing agreement, agreement where AT&T can continue to get revenue from its IP. Hmm. A potential purchase will, however, include studios that belong to WB Interactive like NetherRealm and Rocksteady, the developers behind Mortal Kombat and the Batman Arkham series, respectively. AT&T purchased Time Warner for one, <coughs> pardon me, $109 billion, wow, in 2018 and amassed $200 billion in debt. Investors have called on AT&T to sell non-core assets such as DirecTV and now WB Interactive. There are multiple projects rumored to be in development under Warner Brothers Interactive, including a new game from Rocksteady and a new Harry Potter RPG. There's also a new Batman game in the works at WB Montreal. Okay. So many things to say about this. So, uh, since you seem to be so passionate about this show, <clears throat> hit me. What do you think? Okay, so, firstly, uh, if EA gets a hold of Warner Brothers Interactive, 
like the the demon grows larger. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because like the 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 article says that they'll gain their studios, but not necessarily their IPs. And if they want to continue to use the IPs, then they'll have to pay Warner Brothers to use the IPs, which to me I, is a big red flag for potential buyers because like I don't think that they if they're going to make money if, if they're going to I guess EA has Star Wars already so EA pays you know the, the Lucas Lucasfilm uh to to have the Star Wars license and stuff like that but um so maybe they maybe they would be more interested in this just by virtue of already having licensing deals similar to that but I would think that if you want, if you're going to go out and spend four billion to acquire these studios, that you wouldn't want to potentially end up having to pay them money for every release that you make because you want to use their old IPs. It doesn't. Uh, what's the point in acquiring? <clears throat> what's the point in uh, acquiring a studio if you can't use any of the IP? Well, because like okay, Nether Realm owns its own IP. Nether Realm owns Mortal Kombat, so you okay. would get Mortal Kombat. Okay. Um, but WB doesn't own Batman, or sorry, uh, 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 Rocksteady doesn't own Batman. So you're but just they've acqu- already expressed that they don't want to continue to just do Batman games. They want to ex- expand to other things. Basically, all you're getting is the teams. <clears throat> yeah. Which, I mean, admittedly, these are some awesome teams. Yeah, I think that. I think honestly, if I if I was one of these companies like Take Two or um, uh, Take Two, <clears throat> I, I would love it if Take Two got uh got warner brothers yeah i think that the teams are just very talented and that their value isn't just tied into the ips that they make like you i think you have more of a chance to make more money using those ips because they're so well known and globally huge like batman and harry potter and stuff like that but you don't necessarily need them to put out great games with these studios so it's kind of like it's kind of like that do we do we put out this game that's going to have more, you know, have more sales just by virtue of having the IP recognition and end up paying WB because for the IPs to kind of like, you know, to have the IPs be used in your games? Or do you just buy these studios outright and have them create new IPs that you don't have to pay any money on, but they'll have less reach in terms of their potential audience? I don't know. I think I think if you're if you're talking about selling these studios with the lack of control of the IP, four billion seems like a pretty high ball. Oh well I mean that's the other thing is like I was like, wow, four billion seems like a lot of money. And then you go into it and like AT and T paid a hundred and nine billion dollars for Warner Brothers. This is like Yeah, but that was for for Time Warner. That was or that was for um Yeah, for Time Warner, yeah. So that's a uh, that's everything. A that's their whole infrastructure and all yeah. that stuff. It's, so, it's way way beyond the game space. But so you just four, see four billion is it, it isn't big in that, but in the game realm, yeah, that's exactly. a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. that's that's huge. Uh, but that's the other thing you're talking about. They bought it for where is that bid? One hundred and nine billion in 2018. <clears throat> but then they amassed two hundred billion in debt. What are you doing? Like the big news here is stay away from AT and T. I mean, wow. Well, right, and they also want. It says that they are trying to sell non-core <clears throat> assets such as Directv, which is a huge business in its own. Like, who do you sell Directv to? You know, um, it's like it, to me, this just signals that AT&T is a really bad place. If they're trying to, how you can have all these successful companies under your umbrella, you know, because like you said, okay, so direct TV and Warner brothers interactive and whatever other things are under their umbrella, how you can have the, all those successes and lose money. Something is going on there. Well, I think the thing that's going on there is that AT&T is just in a power struggle with all these other companies that are doing things that they're doing. Like, you know, they're so invested in so many different things that when you dip your feet into these different pools and then a competitor does better than you in those pools, then you just basically have wasted a bunch of money trying to do that, which is like DirecTV. I could see them wanting to sell it off because like not only are they 
not doing as well as a company like Comcast, but they're also not doing as good as a company like Netflix and Hulu and all these other things like they they so you know for them it's like we I think they're just trying to scale back all the stuff that they're involved in because they've it's, overextended it's just further proof that in the capitalist society you know the people at the top change all the time well and capitalism is good I think that it's it's just weird because like I would never I would never assume that at and is in such terrible trouble no I wouldn't think so either Moving on, though, yeah, I still say I will never forgive WB. <clears throat> I knew because this was coming back up. <laughs> Fear one, amazing. Fear two, arguably better. It's hard to say. It was a big departure, mm-hmm. um, but I personally feel like it was even better. And then Fear three was a heap of trash. It was the most garbage. Like, no, I, I'll never forgive them for it. They ruined. One of the, I was so looking forward to Fear Three and reading all the articles. I was like, oh yeah, the culmination of everything. Alma's got all her power. She's about to give birth to you know demon spawn. It's gonna be amazing. And then, and then, uh, uh. well, you know, maybe they'll uh, sell off that franchise to a, that, to a different developer, and maybe maybe they'll bring it back and make a better game. That would be awesome. That would be fantastic. Okay. The next bit of news is a Bungie job listing hints at a new lighthearted game from the developer. This is from Tom Phillips at Eurogamer. Uh, Bungie has been gi- Bungie has given few hints on its new non-Destiny franchise currently early in development, though a series of new job postings have offered a couple of snippets. Click clack. Uh, the studio's call for an incubation art director speaks to the project as being something comedic with lighthearted and whims- whimsical characters. An opening for the incubation investment designer asks for someone clued up on the loot grind game. Living inside a giant database of hundreds of baubles, weapons, and armor is nothing new to you, the job description reads, and neither is building a system to cleverly distribute those items in a necromancer's dungeon. Yes, Joe. We're talking about um, basically another, like, this is starting to sound to me like a MOBA or... It's definitely going to be a live service game. Some, you know, yeah. So, like, the, go ahead. The spe- specifically the loot grind game. Yeah, as soon as they said that, it was like, okay, so they're just looking for a uh, game as a service mm-hmm. that they can grind out some money. Yeah. Um, and if you're looking for a game that's like, unlike Destiny, I mean... Maybe the setting will be unlike Destiny, but it sounds like the the business model will be very similar. Um, so anyways, um, finally, an incubation senior slash lead combat designer is required to work on encounters in which AI will play a part, along with weapons and armor systems. All three positions specifically state that they are for Bungie's new IP, a project the studio wishes to grow into its next big franchise. Bungie boss Pete Parsons last year stated that the studio was planning to become a multi-franchise developer by 2025. We have a pretty specific path to make sure we transform Destiny, he said, and that we have other franchises within the marketplace by then. Back in June 2018, Bungie secured $100 million in funding from Chinese publisher NetEase to begin work on its new non-Destiny franchise. Shortly after, the studio filled, filed a trademark for a project named Matter. So, that... <clears throat> So NetEase is basically, uh, it's a, <clears throat> sorry, um, NetEase is involved in a bunch of these like live service-esque games. So it doesn't surprise me that their next game would be kind of a live service uh, game if they've secured $100 million in funding from a, a, a company that basically develops a bunch of these kind of games. Um, so it's... When I first saw this news, I was like, oh, a lighthearted, whimsical game from Bungie. That sounds cool. But I also was thinking more along the lines of like a single player game. But now that it's going to be a multiplayer focused kind of game, like live service, uh, it's just, I don't know how different it's going to be. Like it, it's going to be different in looks and aesthetic and setting maybe, but it's going to, you know, it's going to be along the same lines of like any other live service game I've played probably. <laughs> this This to me sounds like... Uh, Bungie looking for a game that can appeal to children and get their parents to open up their wallets. Yeah. That's that's all I'm seeing. Well, and 
<clears throat> so if you're a company that wants to have a bunch of like multiple franchises by 2025, I think that you're kind of following the uh, the example of something like Epic, where they want to have uh, something akin to Fortnite, where it's very accessible to a wide audience, very accessible to kids, something that their parents can get behind you playing so that then you can rake in all this money and then do a bunch of stuff with all that money. Just yeah. like Epic's doing with the Epic Game Store. So are we are we looking <laughs> at having a Bungie Game Store? <laughs> I don't I don't think we'll get that far, but I think that they no. definitely need some <laughs> sort of cash cow for them to develop to fund their other franchises that they want to do. I think I think the whole Epic Epic Game Store thing, mm-hmm. um, it very much a one off. I don't think we're gonna see that again. I mean, yeah, I know there was Valve and Steam, yeah, uh, but. That didn't quite go that way. They're like they made, Valve did a whole bunch of games, and then was like, okay, now we have a lot of money, we can make our own store. I think it'll uh, be a lot like what happened with Modern Warfare, where everybody wanted to put out their their you know modern military shooter that takes over the world, and then a bunch of people tried, and none of them ever reached that way. And I think that a bunch of people are, a bunch of companies are going to try to make their Fortnite, but there's always there's just going to be one real Fortnite, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I agree. I mean, it remains to be seen, obviously, but it just, it doesn't feel good to me. Mm-hmm. It looks like a cash grab to me. Um, but with that being said, do you want to launch into our question of the day? Sure, yeah. Uh, okay. So we're going to do a little... A little hypothetical. Get a little get a little hypothetical with you, baby. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so I, I think this might be a thing that we. I don't know if it'll be a regular thing, but I, I like these kind of these kind of things. So um, our question for today is: If you could have any video game character as a friend, who would you choose? Um, if you know, we'll obviously give our responses here in a second, but if you would, would like to join in on the conversation, feel free to do so in the comments or send us an email at uh, nonsensorypod at gmail.com and also, uh, let you, us know what you think you would like, who you would like to have as a friend from a video game. Also, if you would like to make a suggestion for a future question, do do comment or again, email us because mm-hmm. we'll, we'll, you know, oh, yes, we might yeah. get your question read out. Yes, for sure. Like, I, I'm not smart enough to keep coming up with these questions. Uh, no. <laughs> so. <laughs> and that is, that's why it's probably not going to be regular. <laughs> so. Um, About as regular as my grandpa. <laughs> so when you, when you brought this one up to me, uh, there are a lot of different aspects you can look at this. And I've been trying to think of Ah, I have a hard time like thinking of characters, you know, because like I forget half the stuff, you know. Yeah. As soon as you actually have to think of something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. But the one thing that like immediately popped in the one character that immediately popped into my mind that's kind of I just can't get past and makes a lot of sense. I think. I think I might surprise you. Sora. Oh, from Kingdom Hearts? Yeah. Okay. Elaborate. I think I, I think Sora would be uh, a really good real life friend because like all th- all through all of the Kingdom Hearts just are basically him being an awesome friend, looking out, you know. Like you know what I mean? Looking right, out yeah. for all of his people. He's you know? he's uh I mean, despite being, you know, like some sort of keyblade wielding magic character he's also a good friend yeah and he's, that's an, kind am- of the... he's an amazing friend he'll go to any lengths for his friends and he's also ridiculously powerful and yeah. that's someone i want on my side yeah i think I, I brought it up to you when i posed you this question before we started was like you could have a friend and you could pick somebody that's like super powerful that would like help you you know like tackle all your enemies and all your yeah. all the stuff that you're having trouble with but if they, if you become not friends with them, <clears throat> you potentially unleash them on yourself and the world. Well, that, that's the thing is it's also, it also feels like while Sora is really powerful, 
you feel like you could beat him. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he's like he's like four foot tall in comparison yeah. to you, and you're like, all right, uh, let's do it. Yeah, bring it on. Um, so my my character uh, that I would pick is uh, Solid Snake from Metal oh, Gear. Dude, um, he's just a dude. I mean, really, I mean, I know he has defeated multiple giant robot mechs that, that wanted to nuke the planet. But he also feels like more of a realistic kind of guy that you could have on your on your team who can be killed by bullets, you know. So like, if I'm friends with Solid Snake and he just goes rogue or whatever, uh, you know, he's not like a world-ending problem potentially. Well, now you say that, but <clears throat> metal like Metal Gear, he consistently shows that you can't just be a dude with a gun and beat him. <laughs> No, for sure. And I'm not, I'm not expecting that I could. I'm expecting that like an army <laughs> could. Someone could. An yeah. army could do it. Like I, I think that the Doom guy would be cool, but he could also blink an entire army of people out of existence in a second with, with the BFG, you know. Um, but he seems like a, a cool guy. He seems like fairly down to earth, right? Mm. Uh, despite all of his uh, uh, escapades or whatever like that. He seems very chill. He seems like a chill dude that I would, you know, he'd be like, hey, let's go get a beer, buddy. You know, like stuff like that. <laughs> um, and maybe he could, he could like teach me some like actual like, real world stuff. Like he could teach me how to shoot and to like he, CQC and all that stuff. And he could teach you how to creep along in a cardboard box. Yeah. He could teach me. He could show <laughs> me where he gets woods. those damn boxes. <laughs> he's like a jacked six foot five dude. And he's like, you can fit in this box. I'm like, where do you get all these endless boxes from? Do you, you do somebody, do you know somebody that likes works at like a Kenmore outlet that just gives you like fridge boxes all the time? Like let's, let's think about this for a second. You're creeping along in the middle of the woods. And then all of a sudden you like pull out a refrigerator box and slip it on. And the guards walk by and like nothing unusual here. <laughs> So I said that he's just a regular guy, but maybe he's not. Maybe he has a supernatural power that makes guards really dumb. <laughs> like if you're on like a cone around him, you just become stupider. And like a dude bobbing around in a box is like completely cool to you. I don't know. Well, I, I kind of thought of it as more like a Jedi mind trick as they get close. Like yeah. Within his realm, he's like nothing. To I hope he's here. <laughs> I just now I'm just imagining him in the box. Being like, like inside a box, <laughs> just like mind tricking people through a box. Like this is not a box. I like, I like your choice. I'm not switching my answer. I still think Sora would be really cool. And like, if he would let me like swing the keyblade around a few times, that would be awesome. I think the other reason that I picked um, uh, Solid Snake is because they kind of tackled like what it would be like to have Solid Snake, this like mythical character, come into contact with somebody that's like not as good as him and like so in the at the end of mgs5 or the sorry the end of mgs2 solid snake shows up and he's like here riding i'll help you and he's like i got infinite ammo and he has like the the bandana on which is like a cheat from the first game and stuff and then like he embraces the fact that like he's just a busted video game character and he's just like you can shoot as as riding and like try to keep up with him, but he's just like gunning stuff down like all around the room, just so much better than you and stuff. And I just think it would be really fun to <laughs> that watch be, that. That would be awesome. I would love to take Solid Snake to the shooting range. <clears throat> It'd be a blast. Are you a fan of wrestling that lives in the Pittsburgh area? Do you enjoy punk rock? How about diversity and inclusion? Well, enjoy wrestling. A new promotion set to launch in 2020 is here for you. Though they're a startup, the folks at Enjoy have years of experience booking punk shows, promoting bands, and putting out records. They're also pretty well-versed in wrestling, too, having done commentary, videography, graphic design, and social media for many high-profile independent companies. Enjoy Wrestling wants to bring the most talented wrestlers out there to Pittsburgh, regardless of gender, race, or sexual orientation. That same ethos applies to their audience as well, as they strive to create an inclusive and diverse wrestling community aimed at developing a supportive environment for marginalized fans. You can find Enjoy Wrestling on Twitter, at Enjoy Wrestle, on Instagram, at Instagram.com slash Enjoy Wrestling, or you can contact them directly via email at EnjoyWrestlingPGH at gmail.com. Um, <clears throat> so for the for the final part of our uh, of our episode, we did a... Do you want to do the, the, the ones we picked first and then do those? Or do you want to? Yeah, go? yeah we'll do that. Uh, okay, all right. So we've gone through and basically picked our fa our five favorite games from the PS5 reveal. 
um, because that was like the the biggest gaming news of the year so far. Um, and we've uh, we kind of already covered the PS5 reveal in our previous video, which you can watch, um, where we just did a like a live stream on Twitch and basically live reacted and said what we thought about the about the reveal event. So um, with this, I just wanted to point out like our favorite five games individually from that. And then we're also going to go over the five flop games that they showed that we're not very excited about from the <clears throat> from the event as well. Those will be shared though. So we'll have our own individual five that we liked and then we'll have our five combined flop games from it. So, okay. So my top five favorite games that they showed, um, Demon Souls Remaster, um, the Blue Point developed. Oh, did you mention this is in order of anticipation? Yes, correct. This is in, in order of anticipation. So my favorite game that they, the one that I'm most looking forward to is the Demon Souls Remaster, specifically because I never got to play the first Demon Souls. I played all the other, oh, I didn't play Dark Souls 2, but I played Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 3, and Bloodborne, and I played some Sekiro as well. I never finished it because it beat the shit out of me. But <laughs> um, I, I'm interested to see them update this game and to show where the series started and to see if there are any wrinkles from the old design that they carry over that, you know, in 2020 we go, eh, maybe that wasn't so great, or if they change a bunch of stuff. Uh, definitely looks a lot better. Um, so I, and I'm very confident. I'm, I'm, I should be confident in Blue Point because they made the Shadow of the Colossus remaster, which was really good. But you know, I, I there's no, there is a reason to expect that maybe they flub it, just because like anybody can flub anything, really. So um, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for all the people that didn't own a PS3, where this game is, you know, stranded exclusively for all eternity, apparently, until this comes out. Um, I'll be excited to see them play it too. Um, the other game that I'm excited for, my second most excited for game, is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Um, it looks beautiful. It the 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 whole dimension hopping thing has me really interested to see where it goes. You're not allowed to look, Joe. I'm, so, I'm <clears> sorry. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I, I didn't look. I'm excited to see what this game does with the technology. They saw they showed ray traced reflections. They showed them hopping between all these big scenes, um, which takes advantage of that SSD power. So it seems like it's going to be one of those games that is very much, um, you know, shows shows off what sets the PS5 apart. Um, and it, again, it looks beautiful. The amount of stuff that's happening on screen at one time is bonkers. Um, and I really like Ratchet and Clank. I think it's a good middle ground kind of game for people that want to have like a more kid friendly game. This also, you know, appeals to the more adult audience too. that kind of, you know can enjoy that as well it's not too cartoony not too kitty but it is also friendly for you know the kids out there um the next one i have is stray that game where you play as a cat in yeah. a cyberpunk future with where where humans are dead and robots exist and and it seems it seems like it's going to be really interesting you know the, the robots seem like sad there there is a lot you can do with this concept mm -hmm. um I'm, so i'm very excited to see where they go um yeah I agree with you. It seems like all everyone's sad that the humans are gone, which is I don't know that that would be accurate, but I think <laughs> the robots would be like, "All right, cool." I mean, maybe uh, or I, I'm with you. I think it'll actually be like um the humans are dead, the uh, flight of the concord song. I think that's more accurate to how it would go. <laughs> oh no. <the laughs> Finally, robotic dead. beings rule the world. <laughs> So uh, I I just want to give a shout out because the uh, the developer Blue Twelve Studio, um, and, and it's from the publisher Annapurna Interactive. Um, there was a, a there was a demo of this that sh was shown about four years ago of a cat, uh, kind of exploring, uh, more of like a it seemed like more of like a Neo Tokyo, okay, kind of uh, or like a Chinatown kind of area. Um, but I think I I'm pretty like I sure that. I'm pretty sure this is just a uh, either the same game or a continuation of of uh, I think they were behind that and they've kind of evolved it into this game. Um, but I'm happy to see that it like started out as this very interesting thing and it actually got to continue to become something so unique and fun. Um, 
That I feel like I remember that game. That dem or that trailer. Yeah, it was just like a short gameplay clip, but it looked interesting. Uh, I'm I'm interested to see what like playing as a cat sounds cool. I don't know if what they'll finish and execute with will be as cool, but it, it's it gives you a cool new perspective to, from which to play the game. Playing like having played Twilight Princess and you get to like run around as a wolf. Um they did a really good job on that, I mm-hmm. think. And if it did anything like that, like, cause you, you got to like squeeze in through like holes under floorboards and stuff and, Mm -hmm. uh, jump up through when people's windows that were left open. Like, I mean, different, the exploration side, like thinking about seeing the world from a cat's eye view, like you can just pop up on your shelf and like hide up in there in one of them slots over there. Yeah. I mean that just. Well, and also, like, I don't, I don't see like a, like a wolf. I could see being like, a, you know, it has offensive capabilities, right? If you're just a tabby cat walking around, it's it's less like, you know, you're gonna scratch some people, but you're not. It's not like a wolf where you can like stalk in the grass and then hop up on a dude and just like kill a guard or something like that. It's, it seems so. That seems like that's it's gonna be less like combat oriented gameplay too, which is what I I'm, mean. You may have small animal combat. Yeah. You might run into like rats and things. Yeah, maybe you fight mm-hmm. other animals and stuff. Le- less than because you, I don't really see a cat fighting robots, but who knows? But from the, from the vibe of the trailer, it does not seem like combat's gonna be. I, I mean, it might be there, but it doesn't seem like a focus. I think mm-hmm. they're more going for story and exploration. Okay, so my next game is Kenna Bridge of Spirits, which. Um, we, when we both watched it, um, I was very, I was very interested in it because it, it's kind of like looks like Pixar-y. It's very cute. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, the the environments are very bright and lush. Um, and again, I I feel like I'm just attracted to this kind of <clears throat> these these games that can appeal to kids, but also can appeal to adults. Like the the older I get, you know, I I play games like Ori. Uh, the, and the blind forest and like a uh, hollow Knight and stuff. And I've always been somebody that's like, Oh, when I see cartoony kind of graphics and stuff like that, I think that it's going to be like a lame kids, kids thing. Um, <clears throat> and the more and more I, pl- I, I play those kind of games, the more I see like what they offer. Mm. Um, and it seems like a very, I don't know if I want to say like a twilight princess kind of game or not twilight princess, but a, a, a breath of the wild kind of game. But it has like that Nintendo esque charm a bit. Although I can see that, yeah. I I hope that it doesn't end up seeming kind of bland, because the character herself doesn't really seem like that remarkable. Um, she you know she's just a girl with black hair and a staff. You know, like the yeah. the character design isn't that strong, but like the little the little fuzzy guys, and um, I don't know. I'm just I'm just very interested to see what what happens with that game. It could easily be a forgotten game, is is what I'm saying. It, I, I've seen games similar to this in the past with other console launches, where they're they're they look good, but they're also not super remarkable, and then they kind of fade into the background. So I'll be interested to see where this game goes. Um, as as far as what you're you know you're talking about games that appeal to kids, and then like you come back. Like, <clears throat> as an adult, you're finding yourself gravitating towards them again. Like, what's what's really interesting, I think, is that, I, I mean, I think I've said this before. I think it was during a live stream. I don't know. But it, what's, what I really appreciate in, in, like, in Ratchet and Clank and some other games um, in that vein is the, the kids' games you go back and you play those games as an adult and there are so many things that you didn't pick up on when you were little. Mm -hmm. It's like watching, it's like watching Ren and Stimpy as an adult. (laughs) You watch it as a kid and it's some wacky TV show. You watch it as an adult and it's like, who let me watch this? You know, it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It's really weird because I just, uh, my next game, uh, Little Devil Inside, which is my, uh my last one on my list um i just i looked up their website um it's from uh neostream 
is the name of the developer mm-hmm. or whatever. And um, <clears throat> I go to their website and it's not even up. It's not even updated to be, um, to like reflect the fact that it was just shown on this PS5. Uh, um, this PS5 trailer, uh, this whole reveal. It still has like, uh, Windows, Linux, Mac, PS4, Xbox One, and Wii U as their platforms and stuff. So this is something that's been in development for a while, I think. Um, that was is now jumping into the next generation because, like, I mean, if it was that we makes- we U, like, yeah. Um, so that's a little confusing, but I mean, I really like the art style of that game. Um, it looked also like very whimsical and stuff like that. Um, and um, I'm I'm interested to see what happens with this game. Um. It looks like it has a good sense of humor, mm. which I'm all about. It's got like that cutesy humor, um, and there wasn't much talking among the characters and stuff. So it seems like it might be one of those uh, understated kind of games where everybody has like there's not a whole lot of talking. It maybe maybe they have like their own language, or uh, you know everybody talks kind of like nonsense. But you have like little text underneath that kind of tells yeah, you what they're yeah, saying yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but it looked like a lot of fun. Um, Obviously, I could have picked, you know, some of these other bigger games, but I think that I picked these games because they were games that I wasn't really, I wasn't really aware of at all when it, when when we were getting into it. Like, uh, you know, everybody kind of was talking about like a Horizon sequel, a uh, Gran Turismo potentially. Uh, other than Ratchet, though, it's one of the like that's other than, uh, and I guess Demon Souls was was also very much uh, hinted at, but so. I actually, our lists are not, I knew they would be a little different and that they would be a lot the same, but I'm, I'm actually, your list surprised me. Okay. So I'm not going to go too far into detail because a lot, you, you covered a lot of, uh, since we did cover a lot of the same games, um, I'll just kind of do the ones that we didn't. We don't have in common. So my number one, I mean, you already know. Yeah. My number one <laughs> is Horizon uh, uh, Forbidden West. Yes. Um, Can't wait. It's going to be there, so good. There is a reason why they showed that as the very last game before revealing the PS5. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I think that is a lot of people's number one. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that um, that and Spider Man, I think, were the two big hitters. Yeah, and with them ag- r- acknowledging that that's not actually a full game, I'm not going to put that as my most anticipated game. Mm-hmm. It's just DLC, so you know, it doesn't quite count. I don't think. Yeah, and it seems like it could probably have just been, you know, worked into the PS4 game, right? As well, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm excited. Like Miles is my, that's my dude. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I don't think I need to go too much further into it. I mean, Horizon is like, Her- I, I think one of the best games of a generation. It kind of speaks for itself. One. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Other than Last of Us, I, I would say Horizon was the best game of the last generation. If Last of Us wasn't a thing. Well, and I think technically you could consider it that because Last of Us was a PS3 game. <laughs> My phone's about to die. Sorry. <laughs> um, so my no- number two game is Ratchet, which interestingly I think was also your number two. So we put it in the yeah. same spot. <laughs> it's like not the the most high up there, but it does look really good. It's been a long time since we had a Ratchet. Like I think the last one was even just a remake, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like a reboot. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a long time since we had original Ratchet. And it looked amazing. And the introduction of a female character, question mark? Yeah. Very uh, exciting. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I don't know if they're... It's like a new character that is from the same universe as Ratchet, or if it's like an alternate Ratchet. That's what I was left wondering, because they kept falling through dimensions, and then all of a sudden Ratchet was gone and she was there. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I agree with you on on Ratchet as number two, and then I slotted in as my number three, Demon Souls. Okay. Um, 
I don't know. I don't see. I only really played. I I have all three of the Dark Souls, mm-hmm. and I'm bar- currently borrowing Bloodborne from you. And I have played Bloodborne before, <clears throat> but I never got very far. Mm-hmm. Um, classically, I think we've discussed this yeah. on the show. Uh, but I own. I've owned Dark Souls twice, or Dark Souls three twice. And I have Dark Souls 1 remaster, and I have the original on my computer uh, on Steam. Mm -hmm. So, like, I have some experience, but I've never gotten very far in any of those. Like, in uh, in Dark Souls 3, that's the furthest I've ever gotten in any FromSoft game. Mm -hmm. And I got to the point where you go into the crypt after beating the Abyss Watchers, and I just, I struggled to get further than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Like, I will admit... That when I when I beat the Abyss Watchers, it was a fluke. Like I I got <laughs> real lucky. I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> um. So then, uh, just moving on because I mean, enough said. I mean, Demon Souls. Like, who doesn't know about this? Who needs us to like really go on? Yeah, about you don't need this. You don't need to tell. We you don't yeah. need us to tell you why Demon uh, like the Dark Souls and all those yeah. games are special. I I I'm interested to see where it came from. I could go and get the original, but now, like what? I would have to go get a PS3? Yeah, you'd have to get a PS3 and then find a copy of Demon's Souls, which, screw that, you just get the PS5. Yeah, <laughs> so I'll just, I'll get to I'll get to see it eventually. I'll also and that be builds inter- up the excitement. I'll also be interested to see if that potentially comes to PC as well. Oh, dude, that'd be awesome. I hope, I hope it does, so that I don't have to specifically buy a PS5 for it, although I'm going to buy a PS5. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh yeah. And what's your uh what's your so, last two games? So number four I can't I, I'm I'm I don't know. I'm I'm kinda surprised that it wasn't on your list. Mm-hmm. But at the same time I don't know. Uh I picked the Odd World. Uh um Soulstorm. Odd World Odd World Soulstorm. Okay. Um after so Odd World was originally at, on Xbox, mm-hmm. um, and now it's come. And now it's going to be on PS Five. They're making a new one. Um, I've always, I think, I'm most interested in playing this game just because of the trailer, just because of what they showed and the gameplay. It looks like a really intense side scroller with, um, just really pretty. You know. Yeah. Um, so I'll admit it's a shallow interest, but I'm also interested be- just because it's changed over mm-hmm. and now it's going to be a PS5. I think it's ex- exclusive. I don't know if it's an exclusive, but I, again, I, I, the only reason I didn't pick it is because like it was shown previously Okay. at, at, at I think like previous E3s and stuff. Okay. Um, so I wanted to go with stuff that I like wasn't a hundred percent wasn't sure existed before. Yeah. Um, and I've also really never played any of the Oddworld games. I'll admit I never played any of them, but mm-hmm. it looked just from what I saw, it made me curious. Okay. So of of all the games, like, um, I'll come back to that. My fifth pick was also Stray. Yes. There's just something about that game that just it. Just the idea of moving through. I mean, we already talked about it, but just the idea of seeing the world through uh, a dystopian future, but through the eyes of a cat. I mean, it's just no one's done that. Yeah, we get plenty of dystopian future games, but none of that are like also like whimsical. Yeah, it seems like it could be really fun. Yeah. So do you have um, any honorable mentions? I do. My. um, Oh. I have to go back and double check our our flop list. <laughs> okay, well, my honorable oh, mention okay. would be Sackboy: A Big Adventure. Yes, because it looks very much like a uh, Mario 3D World kind of experience, and I want one of those. I've I really like Little, Little Big Planet, um, and so to have like a I I like Little Big Planet and I like co op games, and I really just want to have something that I can sit on the couch and play with my wife. That's fun, and yeah. so I'm I. Would definitely be looking into that game for sure. Um, I'm gonna give the list one one last quick glance. I, I 
I actually, from what I remember, maybe. So if we're excluding games that we knew were coming, then RE8 we have to put aside. Uh, though the trailer looked awesome. Oh, you don't have to. You can pick whatever you want, man. No, I, I no, I agree. I'm, I'm going to put that aside. I mean, it, the trailer looked awesome. Oh yeah. Uh, Gran Turismo Seven. I mean, th- there's bound to be a Gran Turismo. So. I think the trailer for RE8 made me more excited than I expected it to, but I, I did yeah. know it was coming. But like now, th- now that I know what the, it's going to try to do, oh boy. Um. Yeah, I mean, that's my honorable mention. Would be would be Sackboy. All right, I agree with that assessment. <clears throat> um, let's real quick. We got about a minute and a half left. Um, so let's go through our flops. We'll just go through right. a quick this is- quick list of the flops. We won't get too much into it, except for where we where where we have to. <laughs> but, uh, so this was a collaborative. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna do it in reverse order, though. Let's go up. Okay. That so, way. <laughs> so we'll start our honorable mention then. With our number five worst. Okay. And work to number one to okay. the worst from so from not not as bad to 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 terrible. <laughs> okay. Um, Astros Playground. Um. It seems weird for me to say this because of uh, the fact that we talked about how I like to have like some of these cutesy games, like all that stuff, and yeah. potentially something that I could play with my wife. But I'm not interested in this game. Um, so I'll I'll put a caveat on that. The reason this is number five and not higher up the list is because while it does seem simple and kind of dumb, mm-hmm. it does look nice. And if it's something, if it's not a purchase. If this ends up being a uh, bundled game, uh, yeah, like an included game like Wii Sports, it, I think it could come off the list. Okay, no, that's a fair point. I didn't consider the bundled aspect of it. So yeah, which is kind of the impression that I was getting. I, this is if this is something you want expect people to pay money for, massive flop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's our next one, Joe? So number four was Destruction All Stars. Why is this on our list? Evan? This is on my list because I specifically asked for a Twisted Metal revival and um, they kind of gave it to me, but it looks lame and I don't <laughs> want this. Um, I wanted something like dark, hella violent, like lots of explosions and stuff. I, I, I kind of dig the idea that you can like get out of your car and be on foot and stuff like that. But the character design is just weird. It looks like Rocket League more than it does Twisted Metal. And that's I don't want that. That's. I'm surprised to hear that much enthusiasm behind, like, I wasn't expecting that um, rough. <laughs> I mean, so, it still uh, looks it still looks like it could be fun. I yeah. could be into it, but it's, I just want Twisted Metal, man. Well, <laughs> uh, no, I, I think this is the kind, like, I've always liked, I keep forgetting, car combat games. I yeah. always like car combat games. They're really fun. Um but I think my biggest put off with this is the animation style. I really like the idea of the it, it's unclear, but it seems like they're going the t- Titanfall route where you just, you know, you can get out of your car and run around and summon a car and all that where like you can summon your Titan. Like, I'm not sure how that's going to work, but that could be interesting. Um, but the way they showed it. Mm hmm. I think the put off for me comes from <clears throat> like it seems like such an obvious we need to create a wacky cast of characters kind of thing. And I just yeah. I like Twisted Metal was cool because like they just made these characters that were just cool. And and this just seems like they're gonna try to like fill out like all, all these like all these like little archetypes for all the characters and stuff to try to like it it does look like uh an attempted cash grab at your like your teen young kid like i don't know it just it seems kind of maybe i'm cynical but to no, me I, it I, seems like uh it seems like less of a like a, a project that somebody wanted to make and like a focus tested kind of thing uh, i'll 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 wait for that okay but that's why it's not higher up on the list cuz right. it does kind of look like it could be fun yeah i think all of the games that are on this list have potential 
but well, I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Once we get maybe, to the top of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, our next game is Returnal, um, which I think I purely put on this list because the name is so stupid. Um, um, it's very much like a day, uh, not a day after tomorrow. Uh, 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 um, what's the name of that stupid movie? That Tom Cruise movie. I don't remember what it's called, but it, it, there's a Tom Cruise space movie where he keeps reliving the same day over and over again in the, in the same edge vein. of tomorrow. That's the one. Um, but my criticism is they didn't do, they didn't show you anything of what the game is going to be like at all. Well, all and it was, was her saying to herself over and again, over again, uh, I crash, I die, I wake up, I repeat, you know, like, it's like all the, it's like, okay. All yeah, right. I, I think it's interesting because she seems to be like an older female, um, which is cool for like a, a character, like a main character. We don't get, we don't really get a whole lot of that, or if, if anything. Um, and it looks like it could be cool from like, there seems to be supernatural elements to it. Um, I just don't like the gameplay itself didn't seem like all that remarkable. It it seemed like just your, it seemed like your everyday third person shooter. Yeah. To me. Um, I just don't think they did a good enough job of explaining what it was going to be like. I did like, See, I think this probably we should have moved it down the list and like put this as number five because it does look really. It does have interesting aspects. I yeah. don't think this deserves a number three spot. I think we revive our list in the middle, and so it's going to go Returnal's number five, Astro's Playgrounds number four, and Destruction All Stars is number three. Do you agree with that assessment? Yeah, sure, that works for me. Okay, um, that name though. Oh man. Yeah, the name is terrible. The name's <laughs> terrible, and I didn't think they did a good enough job of showing what you're to expect. The only thing that I thought was like really like that's kind of cool is where it was like the planet. She like touches some kind of bug, and then it was like the infection was spreading across her suit. It looked really cool. It look, yeah, it definitely has potential, and it, like it, visually, it's beautiful. I like that they're c- trying to take it into uh, like you know, there's like a- it seems like there's aliens and stuff like that involved in it. Like it could be cool. It's just like the gameplay looked dull as dirt. Um, so our number two. <laughs> Did I read the last one? No, you. Okay. I read the last one. All right. So our number two. Ugh, I don't. Do we have to talk about this? Yeah, we do. We have to talk about it, Joe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to put you through this again. Our our number two is uh, bug snacks. What is this garbage? I don't know, Joe. It looks like you could go walk around your your neighborhood, find a find a strawberry, eat a strawberry, then you start turning into a strawberry. Oh no, isn't that wacky? <laughs> like I don't know. It's just Oh man. I, I, okay, this is disturbing. One. Yeah, yeah it is kind of, yeah. Two, the art style is horrific. Mm-hmm. Three the name is like what? Uh, th- there's nothing about this game that's appealing. Nothing. At all. Yeah, it just doesn't seem... Uh... Why this made it into a reveal event? It's it's It was pretty cringy. And I, I don't want to get into why I would think it's cringy. Because I, I honestly couldn't justify it. If somebody came to me and was like, well, why do you think it's so cringy? And stuff like that. And I tried to justify it to him. I think most of it would just be like, I would just come down to it like because it is, man. I don't know. Like I just feel a way about no. it. <laughs> no, it's. I don't know. The name is garbage. It looks like garbage. It's disturbing. I think th- that's why it's number two. And uh, there was nothing about it. They didn't show you anything aside from hey, you eat something and you start turning into it, and mm-hmm. that's all they showed you. That's not enough to like show off what a game is about. Yeah, that's true. It was just like, here's a wacky premise. Isn't this eccentric and quirky? And then that was that's, it. And that, that's not enough to make me want to buy a game. It was just, no. I just stared at it and was like, what? But if we want to get... My arms turned into wieners and then I tried to carry the lamp and I look, set fire to the village. Look at this guy. Like, you, you ever watch the the game or the shows on uh, Cartoon Network that are like made for kids now? 
where it's just like, here's a thing that happened. Isn't that weird? Yelling about the thing that happened. Like, that's all I got from that from that trailer was just like, look, he has wiener arms. The, look at his wiener arms. Like, that's all I got. And I was just like, God, no, turn this wait, off. Wait, hold on. I, I really hope you're not talking about regular show because like regular shows, the stuff. No, I, no, I'm uh, never mind. <laughs> I won't get into it. Um, okay. Our so, last game. No, hold on. The top of the pile. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> burner, 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 burner. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Volcano High. Oh, my. Uh, this gives me nightmares, dude. It's it's like, it's like a bronies coming out story. I don't. I'm secretly a brony, guys. So I, I've I've talked about like my ability to like enjoy like these touching kind of story games from like, like Hollow Knight, right? Hollow Knight takes place and it's just like these little bugs or whatever, and everybody's just like a little bug, and they all talk like, mur, 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 you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but it also like makes me feel like this emotional connection and like the world that it builds and all that stuff feels great. Um. But, like, something about them trying to take me back to, like, the struggles of high school and stuff like that in in a game with, like, weird sexy fox people or whatever the heck they're supposed to be <laughs> just, just makes me want to die in the worst way. Um, no, the, the, the whole overdramatic high school experience, like, uh, yeah. a breakfast club kind of vibe, like... <sighs> And then the art direction, and j- they didn't show anything as far as gameplay. Yeah, like it may as well be a TV yeah. show. That's the thing is there was like I, there was no gameplay at all. It was just like a, it was, might as well have been a slideshow of the art team that that made the game. Yeah, the, it's, that's all they showed was just like here's the art of the game. Like, is this what the game looks when you play it? I have no idea. This this is how. You come out to your friends as a brony. You say, I'm really into Goodbye Volcano High School. Um, <laughs> also, I'm into little My Little Pony. Um, I have like all of the figurines. I've already all drawn I've already drawn all my friends and acquaintances from my real high school at, in the art style of this, and I've already shipped them to having <laughs> these these weird relationships. And it, it's it's seriously, it reminds me of like it, this is a game for like people that love shipping, and like just but, turning things that should not be were sexualized into. <laughs> we're not going to explain what that phrase means, uh, and I implore you. Yeah, if you want to know, no, don't at, at don't. your own risk. You can do it, but I would not. Don't look it up. Um, I'm already, I'm already horrified. <laughs> I think the thing that annoyed me the most about it was like them, the the the, the, the trailer is like the struggles of a high school kid, and then they just like show like the stereotypical like one of them's in a band. And yeah, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> they're all in a band. They're also like the bonfire and we're going to burn our yearbook. And it's like all of the tropes. Oh, all man. of them. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I guess that's what it was. It was like, I'm, th- I'm so jaded and yeah. sad. Yeah. It's it's these kind of games like this um, are very trope heavy. Okay. All right. Sorry. But <laughs> like it's just weird because. They do things for games that haven't been done in games like this, but they're also, it's like, who cares if they're doing it in a game? Because I've seen this cringy trope a thousand times in TV and movies and all kinds of stuff, and I don't need to see it in a game. I don't. I don't care if it's the first time somebody's gone and done like a high school... it's not <laughs> it's, uh, were you about to yeah, say a high the, school shooter no no no. no. okay okay i was gonna say wow <laughs> yeah that that's got what dark. the game turns into <laughs> that got really dark really goodbye fast. volcano high click clack like oh, no no wow we turned a very dark corner here on non-sensory <laughs> um we um, have we have our honorable mention to get through okay so uh that i think that's this enough isn't, said about goodbye this isn't a bad game by any means. This is a great game. I, I'm even. only mentioning GTA 5 on Next Gen because I can't stand this dead horse being beaten. 
anymore. They just put it up on uh, on Epic Game Store for free. It's how old now? Yeah, I just like good, good, good on you, Rockstar. You want to keep selling shark cards? <laughs> Go ahead, keep selling shark cards. But I, I have no respect for this company anymore. Like, I love. I just listed Red Dead Two as like one of my favorite games of all time, and like bring that to the next gen consoles. Make that more pretty and make that run at 60. I don't care about GTA 5. It's been seven years. It's been three console generations now. Let it go. Like, yeah, that, that. And if you're a person out there that's listening to this that is going to play GTA 5 on, on PS5 or Xbox Series X, you're the problem. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with wanting to get... The experience you had, but prettier. Or if you're like, oh, I'm going to now just wait to play it on a PS5. But they've already had the experience that they have <clears throat> that is now prettier in the PS4 version. Oh, uh, well, f- I mean, fair enough. And you could also like get the we already talked about in the episode where we talked about Epic Game Store. Yeah. Uh, doing the free GTA, you can even get the mods that have the even better graphics. So. You already have it. That's why this is an honorable mention. Because it is a good game, but it's just tired news. It's okay. It's not news. Now that we've now that we've properly raged, we've we've gushed about the things we want to play. We've raged about the things that we don't have to play, but we think that other people shouldn't play because we're jerks. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's gonna be the end of our episode. Thank you so much for joining us again on a lovely Tuesday. <laughs> I always say uh, yeah. the day that we record. But thank you, and um, stay tuned. Go into our uh, Nonsensory Twitch channel. We'll be doing a live stream again like we do every Tuesday at 7.30, and you can join us. We'll probably be playing through some more Halo Reach. I think that's the plan. All right. As long as Colin's issues are resolved. <laughs> yes, hopefully. It all, all looks good. We had some computer troubles. but Oh, yeah, he's good now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so with that being said, we love you. Peace. Be easy. <laughs>